Hello, today we will be talking about the various types of industries and where it would be most appropriate to establish an industry. So we will be talking about the locational patterns of industry. So let's start with the types of industry. Before we start with the type of industry, let's do a quick recap of what we covered under the economic activity. So here we have the basic three kinds of economic activity. So this is a kind of primary activity. This person would be cutting the tree and chopping it down. So this is a primary activity. Now this tree, after it has being chopped out, it would be sent to a table factory for manufacturing of a table. Okay, so this is a kind of secondary activity. Okay. And finally, this table would go to a furniture shop and there that, that table would be put up for sale and a person X or Y would come and see whether he is liking the table to purchase or not. So this table in the furniture shop would be a kind of tertiary, tertiary activity. Okay. So these are the three primary sectors of economy that we have already discussed. Now, these three form the basis for all types of industry. So let's start with the classification on various types of industry. So we'll be classifying industries based on various different parameters. So the first parameter that we would be considering is based on raw material. So on the basis of raw material, we can say whether the industry is based on agriculture. So you have agricultural produce coming in, like cotton coming up uh, for manufacture of textiles. Then you have mineral base. You have copper and iron coming in for manufacture of steel. Okay. Then you have forest-based industry, you have paper pulp uh, coming uh, from manufacturing of paper pulp, you have forest, uh, forest uh, logs that are coming in, or you have marine-based industries which are using marine products, for example, cod liver oil to manufacture cod liver, uh, sorry, uh, liver of cod to manufacture the cod liver oil. Okay. So this is basically based on raw material. The next is based on the role of industry. So you have either a basic industry, which is the fundamental industry, for example, iron and steel industry. So iron and steel form the pillars for any construction activity. And then you have the consumer industry, for example, toothpaste, you have brush, everything that you use in your day-to-day -day life, or the commodity. So chocolates, these are all kind of consumer industries. So this is based on the role. Then you have based on investment, you have a small scale, medium scale and large scale. Uh, this categorization varies from country to country. Uh, let's say for India, uh, small enterprise would be 25 lakhs, medium would be 25 lakhs to 5 crore and above then, uh, above then that would be large scale. So this varies from country to country. Then based on ownership, you can have public sector industry, which is totally under the government lookout. Okay. Then you have private sector, which is owned by a private firm. Uh, for example, let's take an example of Reliance, is a private sector industry in India. Government industry, you have the India Post. Then you have joint sector. Joint sector is the activity which is governed both under private and public. So it's kind of public-private partnership, we call it as joint sector. And then you have cooperative sector, for example, Amur. So it's basically, and farms in Russia are all cooperative sectors. So it's basically the local people of the region get together and join hands to, hands to form a cooperative section of the society. And that produces things for the uh, purpose of themselves and for market. So that's kind of cooperative sector. Then based on raw material, you have heavy industries and light industries. For example, watch industry is a kind of light industry. Okay, Heavy industry includes, again, iron and uh, steel industry. It's a kind of heavy industry. Then this is an interesting classification. Resource-based industries or footloose industries. Resource-based means industries which need to be located near the resources. For example, let's take again steel industry. 
you must have iron nearby coal nearby water nearby okay then only you can have iron and steel industry is requiring the location of resource to be close to the industry the other is food rules industry for example computer chip industry it industry anywhere you can put a laptop and start ask people to start working so that does not require any specific location where a person would require to sit because you will have easy availability of raw material it does not require any such parameters so that is a kind of foot loose industry it can be located anywhere so these were the various classifications of industries that we have talked about today now we would be covering on, going on to the next topic that is location of the industry now if i am an entrepreneur and i want my factory to be set up into certain parts i have an option say for example out of these five states okay i have to choose in which state i have to start my plant and my plant is for say a new iron and steel industry again okay what would be the parameters that i would take into consideration first is whether people are willing to invest in the region i have five localities a b c d and e okay now these five localities i would have to see whether there is inward investment and that chance of investment is easy or not supposedly it's in a very rural and tribal area will a person come and invest there it would be very difficult so this would be ruled out in that case now i'll have to see opportunities for expansion i'll have to see whether i can get extra land in future if i want to expand my industry okay so if i am an entrepreneur and i am willing to expand my business i'll have to have an eye on to whether i have enough space for expansion in future or not or is that location which i am getting amidst a busy crowded city so if it's already between a very crowded city what would happen is i won't get a chance to to expand then i have incentives is government providing subsidy in that area for example if i say in area a government is providing lot of subsidy because government wants to develop this area on a full new basis uh, consider this as a one of the smart city projects that are coming up okay then i'll have to see whether this area is connected well with transportation and communication i have internet facilities i have communication facilities i have my facilities of my worker commuting daily so all these facilities i'll have to take into account then the reputation of the region whether this region has a good reputation or not the crime rate in the region the competition whether there are ample of power supply or not so that's again an important parameter then i have to check out the external economies of the scale i need to see whether people are living by in the nearby areas or not because if i don't have lot of people who are living in the nearby area what will have to uh, what would be happening is people will have to commute long distances and those who are commuting long distances tend to uh, move on to other sectors or other industries which are nearby then i have to see whether i have enough raw material enough coal iron and water in the nearby regions where i am planning to set up the industry and finally since iron uh, iron steel industry is kind of heavy industry i'll also need to see whether the market is nearby or not because if i am manufacturing it in say 200 kilometers away from the main city and another region i am manufacturing it 50 kilometers away from the main city my transportation cost here would be very less as compared to 200 kilometers so market nearness to market it aims at reducing of the cost so this is again important parameter now this is one of the most important concepts that we would be talking about and this is what is agglomeration effect when i as an entrepreneur is planning to set up a new industry what would be my basic consideration if i have two or three industries in the region which are already surviving what would happen i would have easy access to power 
because these industries are already consuming if i am trying to establish into a totally new area i'll have to request from uh, i'll have to put a request from the government to start a new power line in that region okay then since workers are already commuting and coming to this region they have transport and communication facility that is already there so this is what is explained under the agglomeration effect due to the existing firms or industries in a particular region any new industry that wants to come up has an easy way okay so that's why in any region if you see across the globe industries usually come up in the region where there are prior industries that have been set up so you have the effect of concentration as a, as well as it becomes widespread so you can see the industry being uh, serving a huge number of requirements in that region so that is one of the agglomeration effects and then again you have benefit for example this firm is producing is refining coal okay and i need a kind of refined coal i am located close to this firm say i am located here this is my location okay so what would happen is since this firm is supplying me refined coal my transportation cost or the input cost would become very less and i would prefer to get coal refined coal from this firm rather than firm which is located say 2000 miles away okay so this is why we say agglomeration effect is very predominant in industries and finally the ultimate aim of all the location is to minimize the cost of production so that if company a company x is producing the product and say dollar to 2000 i can produce the same commodity in say dollar 1500 okay so what i am trying to do if my cost is less i can sell the product at a better margin i can make more profit out of it so my profit margin increases and again i can also supply the commodity at a competing rate so these are the benefits of minimizing the cost so these were the various parameters that we have discussed today now let's try to understand these parameters again by means of a simple classification so here we have the classification so let's understand the various factors the physical factors first so the physical factors includes raw materials should be available nearby i should have energy supply then it should be accessible or transport facilities should be good then you should have climate land and water nearby and there should be natural routes then you have human and economic factors that affect the uh, region so you should have cheap labor you should have good working force market should be there transport and cost of the land should be optimum uh, it should be able to invest capital it should have an option for export orientation or export potential management should be good there should be industrial inertia efficient organization should be there and finally there should be good agglomeration effect which we have already discussed in the previous slide then there are a lot of government factors that government tries to put up so government has policies uh, that you can put up industry in certain area and in certain area it's restricted so you have to obey the policies then you have support from the government and finally a stable atmosphere so these are the three classification of the factors that we have already discussed now i already have a plan in mind to set up the industry as an entrepreneur but what are the problems that i would be facing while starting this industry so i can have problems of various types the first problem is if i am starting a company on say textiles okay and there is already an existing textile company very close say less than a kilometer to my company what would happen there would be a kind of cutthroat competition then i will have to uh, give labor good prices otherwise labor would move on to the company b there is company a so labor would tend to move to another country uh, company if i am not giving good prices to the labor so my overall cost would increase <clears throat> then you have new and existing facilities interaction so if there is an existing facility that is always 
already there for textile and i am trying to start a new facility i will face severe competition okay that competition would be in various forms as we discussed in the form of labor then in the form of market this textile company already has a well established market Okay. and i'll have to compete with this well established market to establish my supremacy in that area there is set of location requirements certain location requirements are already met and i'll have to have a, a big fight to obtain those locational requirements so for example if there is a dam nearby and this company is draining say uh, nearly half of the Uh, water from the dam. I'll have to take permissions to drain the remaining water, and I cannot make the dam empty, obviously. So there is a set of location requirements that I'll have to face. Then distance. Distance is again an important criteria or problem situation which can be occur, which can occur in establishment of any new industry. so i should have solutions for space characteristics if that is not there it would be very difficult to survive in an environment of competition so i should have solutions for space characteristics and finally new facility characteristics should be given okay so these are the basic problems that are faced by any new industry that comes into our market it would have to obviously compete with the existing industry and make it place so it would have to struggle for resources for labor for land okay so these are the major drawbacks that are faced by any industry when they try to establish so in this class we have talked about in very simple terms what are the various industries and the classification for various industries the importance of location of industry and the agglomeration effect and how it works well in industrial setup In the next session, we would be talking about the various theories of industry, the Weber's model, Hartley's models, and the Loesch models. So stay tuned with that. Have a good day.